iWorks suite of products includes Pages, Keynote, and Numbers. Before we start using any of those products, there are a couple of things that we want to check on our iPad. You will want to navigate to your settings. Once settings have loaded, you want to check your Apple ID, which also includes information about your iCloud and your iTunes. In this case, we're interested in iCloud. We're going to tap on iCloud, allow that to load, and you will scroll down until you can find iCloud Drive. If your iCloud Drive is turned on, it will be green. If it's turned off, obviously it will be white and gray. If your iCloud Drive is turned on, you have the ability to save files to the cloud so that they are not stored on your iPad. Obviously, this reduces the amount of space that is being consumed on your iPad by files that you create. As a teacher, you may find that you want to have this option turned on. So notice that I have this option turned on for Pages, Numbers, and Keynote, so I have the ability to save my files in my iCloud Drive if I would like. I can also save them locally on my own iPad. GCSC teachers, please be aware that students will not have the option to use their iCloud Drive. All files students create will be saved locally on their iPad, and this will impact the amount of storage that they have. This is because students use what's called a managed Apple ID that is managed by the school corporation, and therefore they do not have access to the iCloud Drive feature. So again, this is just something that you want to explore for your own personal iPad, and you will want to use this if the space on your iPad is limited, and you envision creating a large number of documents with the iWorks suite. Now that you've checked a few basic settings, let's learn about our iWorks product. Now that we've learned a little about iWorks in general, let's open Keynote and find out some specifics about that app. Once Keynote loads, you will see several features that were explained in the first portion of the video. On the lower right hand corner of the screen, I have the ability to browse where I can locate files that may be located on iCloud Drive, or I can of course find the ones that are on my iPad. If I go to Recents, I see any recent Keynote presentations that I have created. If you have a large number of presentations, you can use the search feature to search for any presentations that you have. On the far right, you have the ability to use your iPad as a remote when presenting a Keynote, and more will be covered on that later on in some of the advanced courses, but for now, just know that option is there. And then to the left of that, you have the plus button, which is what will create a new presentation. Go ahead and click the plus button if you have not already. Once you have chosen to create a new presentation, you will see there are a number of themes. You have both standard and widescreen options, and you can choose whichever one you would like. If you scroll through, you see there are a number of different presentations based on various themes that you may want to undertake when you are giving your presentation. For the purpose of demonstration for this video, I'm just going to choose a simple white presentation. Once you have loaded your presentation, there are a couple of features that you need to be aware of. In the upper left hand corner, there's what looks like a grid. If you tap that, you have the ability to view in slide view, which is the default. You can go to a light table, which will show your slides in a table format. And you can also turn speaker notes on or off. And you can also choose to show skip slides by turning those on or off. I'm going to return to the default view because that's what I like, but I'm going to leave the presenter notes on. And to remove that menu, simply tap the grid again, and that menu will disappear. In the lower left hand corner, there's a plus button. If you click the plus button, you have the ability to add a slide, and you can see the example layout for each slide before you choose to add that. So once you want to add a slide, you choose what you want, and then add that. So for example, if I want to add a slide that has three pictures, I will tap on the slide that has three pictures, and that slide will be added. Once you have created your presentation and know how to add additional slides to your presentation, there are some other operations that you will want to explore. In the upper right-hand side, you will see there's a paintbrush. If you tap there, you will have the ability to change your slide layout. You can see that I selected a slide that has three pictures, but if I wanted another slide layout, I could simply select there and choose the one that I wanted. So if I wanted the horizontal layout, I could change that, or vertical, or if I just wanted just a title, I could select that as well. If I go back to the three photo, because that's the one I want, I can choose that option. I also have the ability to change the background, and there I have a number of options. I can choose from preset, I can choose a color, I can choose a gradient, or I can choose from an image. You can see how each of those also have sub options if you wish to investigate those. So I can leave the background as the white that it started off with, or I can leave change it to what has been selected right now. I also have the ability to add things such as a title by turning that on, a body where I could type just general text. This slide having three pictures, I probably would not want that option. And I also have the ability to turn on the slide number if I would like. At the bottom, there's the Edit Master Slide. If I select right there, I can change the options to make them universal, so that anytime I insert what's called the Photo 3-Up, it's going to have those changes. 
Whereas before when I did it, it just applied to one slide. So if I click right here and I change the background, any time that I insert this slide in the future, it's going to have that background as opposed to the white background. So that will make your change universal if you would like to edit the master slide. I am not going to change those options at this point, but that is something that you certainly can do. And when you click done, it will take you back to where you were originally. But the paintbrush gives you a number of options in terms of altering the slide layout. There are a number of items that can be inserted into a keynote presentation. To discover the full array of items, click the plus button in the upper right hand corner. There you will see all four of the categories and each of those categories have subcategories. First there's a table. If you need to insert a data table of some sort, you can easily do that and you can scroll to the right to see additional formats for tables that can be inserted. To the right of that, you have charts and graphs and you can see there are 2D charts, 3D charts, and interactive charts in which you can actually scroll between various settings. Each of those options, whether it be 2D, 3D, or interactive, have multiple options that you can choose from as well. Moving to the right of that, we have clip art, and you can see that there are multiple categories here, and below that, there are additional options you can find by scrolling up and down. So you have science, people, places, activities, transportation, work, and you can also scroll all the way back to the beginning, which I believe is basic, and objects as well. So if I wanted to search for something, I can do that as well. So if I wanted to search for school, I can see there are a few results for school and I can easily put that object in. In this case, I would not want to do that because it's the top of the picture, but it is there. Clicking back on the plus button on the far right, I see I have the option to insert various multimedia items into my presentation. I can insert a photo or video. I can turn on my camera and take a picture. I can record audio. I can choose something from the image gallery. I can also insert from someplace on the iPad. If I have a file saved on the iPad somewhere, I can insert that file. I can also insert a drawing or an equation. Any of those options can be inserted very easily into a keynote presentation. Even more options for a keynote can be found by accessing the three dots in the upper right hand corner. By pressing there, you will see a number of options that are available to you. I want to draw your attention to several of these. First, transitions and builds. This gives you the ability to add an animation or a transition to your slide. While animations and transitions can be fun, I always tell students that it's most important to work on the content of your presentation first and work on transitions and animations second. I know students like to focus on animations and transitions, but they're not the most important part of the presentation. But they are there, and you can tap any object to choose to add those items, and you have the ability to build in or build out, so you can choose effects, you can explore options for them, you can decide when that is going to occur, if there's a delay, you can also choose what order they are going to be in. The options there are basically endless, but again, I tell students to be more concerned with the content than with those options. But they are there, and they can be an important part of a presentation, especially if you're trying to build some topic or suspense, something like that. Going back to the three dots, you have such options, such as adding a soundtrack, setting a password, turning guides on, so that if you're putting lots of photos in, you can see spacing guides and center guides. Going back, you can see that you also have keynote help, and you can send feedback and learn what's new in Keynote. You also have the ability to search your presentation. I will draw your attention last to the export option. Under export, you have the ability to export your presentation as a PDF or a PowerPoint, or actually as a movie. Users who do not have Keynote are not able to open Keynote presentations, so it is imperative that you save that file in a format that can be opened by others. A PowerPoint is great if you know the person you are sending it to has access to PowerPoint, Although sometimes moving between Keynote and PowerPoint, you will lose some items, and if it's heavily formatted, you may lose some of that formatting. A PDF is always the best route to go, as that is essentially the universal way to share files. So once you select PDF, it will generate a PDF. You can then choose how you would like to send that PDF, and you can choose to share that by drive, by email. You can save it as a file, email it later on. However you would like to do that is entirely up to you but that is the best way to save and share a presentation with someone who you know does not have Keynote. Last but not least, when you are ready to present your Keynote, click the play button in the upper right hand corner. It looks like a triangle and is found on the left side of the options. Obviously the first slide is blank. I'm going to tap that to continue on to the next slide. Any builds or transitions that you have will also be displayed as part of your presentation. So if I tap the screen, those will appear as well. So I had that picture appear with some transition and you can see that it has done so. 
If I want to annotate my screen or use a laser pointer, I can hold down with a long press anywhere on the screen, and I can use the laser pointer, and I can point to various options on the screen. I can also choose to annotate anywhere on the screen by clicking the color I would like to use for annotation, and then drawing on the screen. Any annotations that I make will not be saved on the presentation. So if I wanted to circle something there, I can do that, draw attention to that, and it will be removed as soon as I'm finished with the presentation. I can also undo a drawing at any time, and I can easily change colors if I want to annotate. And if I want to go back to a previous slide, I can do that, and I can annotate there as well very easily. Annotation is just part of what makes Keynote great, and hopefully you will find it useful for you and your students. Mm -hmm.